Welcome back to Autism at Home, brought to you by us at Early Autism Project Malaysia through our non-profit initiative, The Hope Project. My name is Josheben Isaacs and welcome back to our 20-part series entitled Functional Communication. So far, we've covered five lessons, including a basic introduction on the importance of functional communication, signs and gestures, as well as the picture exchange communication system, communicating using devices, visuals in the home, and this lesson is all about two-way communication because we all know that communication has to be two ways. It has to be bi-directional. And so especially in the last few lessons, we have been focusing hard on trying to give our little kiddos a voice. Just because they may struggle to speak verbally or fluently does not mean they don't deserve to have a voice. And using alternative communication devices, whether it's packs or whether it's apps on a device, whether it's signs or gestures, just gives them the power to communicate, the power of a voice. But then what happens when they start to use it frequently? For instance, Frequently requesting for snacks or swimming time, essentially items that they are not able to access all the time or should not access. Now I know if your child was frequently requesting for carrots and cucumbers, you would be like, I'm going to stop the whole fridge. I would be the same. High five. But the reality is our kiddos tend to usually ask for the not so healthy stuff, the sweets, the chocolates, the reinforcing rewards essentially. And so we just need to do two things actually. Firstly, to do our best to communicate back to our kiddos in a way that they understand, which essentially will be through, yeah, visuals. So things like a first then board, a daily visual schedule, a weekly schedule, even a monthly calendar, would all be part of the standard visuals that we would use around the house. So ideally, in theory, when your child asks for another cookie, you could take the cookie picture and place it on the daily schedule at snack time and visually basically show your child that it's still lunchtime, then playtime, then snack time. Or if your child asks for the pool using the going out choice board, but you're only able to go to the pool on Wednesdays and today it's still Monday, you can show your child the weekly schedule and communicate using the visuals that just wait, today is Monday, tomorrow's Tuesday, and then Wednesday is pool day. Now I say this all in theory because I know some of you parents are already shaking your head at me and saying, do you know what kind of meltdown I'm going to face? Um, and I know some of you parents have already um, disappeared that visual, meaning that favorite item icon is just disappeared, missing, um, because you just can't cope with it triggering an upset behavior. And so apart from communicating to our kiddos using the visuals we just talked about, we also need to have done those building blocks foundational skills. Remember our good old french fry chart? Cooperation is right at the bottom of this and we have some very handy series, Unit 4, on teaching basic cooperation which is to follow the concepts of first, then, foreshadowing, finish box, follow a schedule, follow through. And we also have another series on building flexibility, Unit 7, which includes teaching waiting, changes, accepting no. So essentially, communication has to come hand in hand with other foundational skills, which include cooperation, flexibility, and overall tolerance. So do go back and get a refresher on those areas. At EAP, we actually have a daily checklist of cooperation and flexibility for most of our students, just to ensure that they're able to generalize these skills through their daily life. We also don't want to miss emphasizing social stories as a wonderful way to communicate. Developed by Carol Gray, these simple DIY storybooks or even online versions essentially provide a narrative of what is going to happen, be it a new situation or a change, and it's brought such a world of difference to all the children we have worked with. We often use video models as well to show our kiddos what we are trying to communicate to them. You can always refer back to Series 6 on teaching materials on how to make these. So now it's your turn. Have you already implemented visuals to communicate to your child? For example, the daily schedule, the weekly schedule, monthly schedule, the first then board, the rule card, social stories, video models. If you haven't, why not start today? Go ahead and make your own or print out the template versions and just start with one key communication to your child. Additionally, go over the following cooperation flexibility list and identify if you may need to review or actually start teaching these skills to your child. The concept of first then, the concept of foreshadowing and the finish box, 
following a schedule, the ability to transition, the ability to wait, the ability to cope with changes, the ability to take turns, also the ability to accept no. Now, don't worry if your child needs to learn these areas. You just go back to Units 4, Unit 7 and you start there. Lastly, before we wrap up this lesson, is to remember to always try your best to communicate to your child in a way that he or she can understand. This is not easy, especially if it seems like your child is not responding, but the consistent effort you make, especially using visuals paired with short verbal statements, will one day click and you are giving your child the best opportunity to understand their world in an easy, simple way. Well, that's it for this lesson, and we will see you in our final lesson on troubleshooting functional communication. Thank you very much for your support. And with the amount of interest we have received online, we've actually started providing online services and have worked with clients in other states of Malaysia, as well as other countries such as New Zealand, Philippines, Singapore, Switzerland, Indonesia, China, and Brunei. So do get in touch with us for more information by scanning this QR code. If you haven't already, do check out our online resource platform, Autism at Home, which has all the lesson videos, corresponding articles, and downloadables available for you for free. Stay updated through our social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And do click on the subscribe and follow buttons to get more information. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you very soon.